and welcome to London Film Club with me, Arazu Baker. This is your weekly round of all the biggest films to the capital screens this week. Today, I am joined by a lovely, lovely resident reviewer, Mr. David Brake, who also doubles up as his alter ego, the editor-in-chief of film blog, One Room with a View. Yes, that is your alter ego. <laughs> We also welcome back to the show our guest, Beth Webb, who is the editorial assistant at Film 4. I'll be talking to them in a few seconds, but first, let's have a look at what's coming up on today's show. We talk all things comic books and superheroes as we have a deeper look into the phenomena that is Suicide Squad. We are taken through a journey of questions, including the WAPO, that is, does size matter in Up For Love? Plus, Sweet Bean shows us the true power of a sweet tooth. Right, let's talk about Suicide Squad. If the promos are anything to judge by, this is one powerhouse of a film with one hell of a punch. And here is a quick tease of the trailer. Gentlemen, ladies, what if Superman had decided to fly down, rip off the roof of the White House, grab the president right out of the Oval Office? Who would have stopped him? I want to build a team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. Y'all jokers must be crazy. What? This is the deal. You disobey me, you die. Try to escape, and you die. You got a boyfriend? You irritate or vex me. I'm known to be quite vexing. I'm just forewarning you. You die. You can't deny it is a great trailer. It is it a great trailer. It does pack a punch, but tell us a bit about what the actual film is about. So, the Suicide Squad is a group of sort of criminals with supernatural abilities, and they've been brought together, because this is now sort of DC are trying to create a whole cinematic universe, so this comes after Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. And the idea being they're trying to create a team of superheroes, supervillains, you know, to fight back. So, to have like a team who they can use for their own free will. So, everything sounds good, especially the trailers, you know, the use of Bohemian Rhapsody has always been one of those things that's caught everyone's attention, but word of mouth's not looking too hot not looking too hot at all. So the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes in particular are the big sticking point for a lot of fans. Yeah. There's been a petition. There's been a petition for the site to be shut down over the <laughs> reviews. <laughs> the DC fans, right? Yeah. DC yeah. fans massively irritated by the feedback thus far. I mean, you don't have to listen to the reviews. Obviously, listen to our reviews. But if you don't want to yeah. listen to the reviews, <laughs> don't go on the site. Um, it looks really promising, really great cast, really cool, like, pop art marketing, sort of... Mm. I mean, across Shoreditch, it's just littered with big murals of it. It really looks They anyway. have thrust a lot of money into this. Yeah. I think they've had to, um, but, but, to be honest. But the problem is, is that, you know, the word of mouth is that it's... It's just that it's the same problem that Batman vs Superman suffered, that it's too big, overdrawn, it's not as funny, you know, because the whole problem, the difference between Marvel and DC is that largely people say that DC doesn't, you know, the movies are so serious, kind of like Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight trilogy, that they don't realise that, you know, just chucking a joke. But the reason why that's disappointing is, as a backlash from Batman v Superman and the yeah. fact that it didn't have humour, they actually went into loads of reshoots for this they did. to adjust that. Exactly. And that was even until recently. Yeah. And the PG-13, so a big thing that people have been annoyed at, so the, the director is quite renowned for quite brutal, quite gripping, mm. gritty dramas. He did End of the Watch, yeah, he did yeah. Fury, the big tank film with Brad Pitt. Mm, with this, they Really good films. They feel like they've, they've massively had to sort of rein back to obtain this PG-13. Yeah. Mm. And a, a massive loss. I mean, you've got some really great cult images here. It could mm. have been something really great as it stands. And the cast, I suppose, they're meant to be groundbreaking. One that everyone's talking about is Joker, Jared Leto. Yes, what did yeah. you make of him? Well, I think from what we can see is that it, when you're following something like Heath Ledger's Joker and all the sort of canon and history that goes behind that, it's kind of a hard act to follow. And there's been a lot of the production troubles Mainly, that's been the sort of main marketing thing. How he sends sort of dead pigs to Viola Davis, or had a fight with Will Smith. Yeah, he eats his family photos. He eats his family photos. Usual. I mean, we got, <laughs> well, we, yeah. They've kind of they've been they've been talking. And we actually got to catch up with them on the red carpet, oh. and we got to see what they had to say about their roles. Injection you got. It's a nanite explosive. It's the size of a rice grain, but it's powerful as a hand grenade. You know what's really cool? Um, I, I've uh, never really uh, played a, a baddie. That's what you say in England, right? A baddie. I've never played a baddie before. Um, 
You know, it's really liberating and fun, you know, because there's things you'd never say or never do in, uh, you know, decent human existence that, you know, as an actor, you get to let these really um, strange parts of yourself hang out, you know, so it, it was, uh, it's fun to ad lib and to create and to say and do things that are so in opposition to who you really are. It, this is a character with no rules. Uh, and, you know, I think fun is one of the crucial ingredients uh, to the Joker. A little bit of chaos, and it doesn't help if you're a bit of a psychopath as well. Getting to work with someone like Jared, though, I mean, whoever was going to play the Joker, we were going to go through something. And, and to have, like, such a committed professional actor to do that with just made my job so much easier. Um, I can't even describe to you how fun it was. It was really cool to be able to, like, let loose and find these two characters um, you know, within myself and also just external information and yeah, I mean, I had a good time. I mean, it was pretty weird being covered in that much makeup every day, but you know what? Whatever. It was cool. I realized that I definitely got clear I'm in my 40s on this movie. And just as a general rule, 40-year-olds should not try to hang with 20-year-olds. It's like our bodies don't do that anymore, you know? It's like, you know, this crew would leave leave work and go hang out and I'm like we just worked for 12 I want to sleep man you know <laughs> it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, fantastic though he says that I don't believe a word of it because you <laughs> signed up to work with young people mate <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird one because now we've got all this sort of negative word of mouth about Suicide Squad and the negative word of mouth well the negativity that was Batman vs Superman so it's a weird What's place next? for the DC universe to be yeah. in we've got Wonder Woman Aquaman the Flash I yeah. think they're going to struggle to pull themselves back up yeah I mean we, I me. mean, it looks like they're kind of with the new trailers that they showed at Comic Con it was like oh maybe maybe they I mean they all back. look great in trailers but they ultimately it's kind lesson. of like eh, a bit of a money game it yeah, is isn't it? DC Fans. But I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not that hard to yeah. get right, as Marvel has shown. And yeah. so it's kind of one of those things. They're great characters, so why can't you make amazing movies? Well, we've got a lot to look forward to. There's plenty to come out, right? <laughs> so Suicide Squad hits the big screens tonight at midnight. So go and check it out and let us know what you think of it. As soon as you see it, simply jump onto Twitter or Facebook and hashtag us London Film Club. It is time to see whether the wave of Finding Dory was able to wipe clean last week's top hitting number one, the BFG, in this week's top five box office hits. Continuing to defy age like a gnarly old parrot, The Secret Life of Pets remains in the top five this week, taking £730,459, approximately bringing its total box office so far this year to £30.5 million, pounds, which in dog or cat money is... Oh, hang on, I'll just work this... Oh, how much is it? Star Trek Beyond falls from second to fourth place this week with a box office haul of £2.3 million. Pounds. She can't take any more, Captain! Uh, Scotty might say. Her boy. Please don't eat me. It couldn't quite compete with the two new big releases this week, but the BFG holds its own at number three. Spielberg's latest earned £3.3 .3 million this week. He's back after nine years and ready to take the UK box office by storm. Jason Bourne takes the runner-up slot this week with an impressive £7.6 million in its opening weekend. He might be an amnesiac, but he hasn't forgotten how to draw in the bucks. No one, not an angry spy, a big friendly giant, or the crew of the Enterprise were enough to take on the might of a forgetful blue tang fish. I remembered something important! Something important? What? Something about a clam or... No. No, an oyster? No. Pixar's much-anticipated sequel to Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, swam to the top of the box office list in its opening weekend with £8.1 million. Pounds. Go on, Dory. It's one for the animations, isn't it? Finding Dory did it, but Secret Life of Pets is like an annoying flea. It's still there. <laughs> Time for a quick break, but don't go anywhere, as still to come on today's show. 
up for love questions if size actually matters. Plus, I'll be announcing the winner of last week's competition. So keep it on London Film Club and we'll catch you in a few. Hello and welcome back to London Film Club with me, Arizu Baker, David Brake and Beth Webb. These two clearly landed me in it and missed out on the superhero memo. What? 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 You're both dressed normally and I'm I here look as Batman. Underneath, it's what <laughs> counts. Amazing. Yes, it is. So you can good. reveal that later. <laughs> Next, we have a tale of unlikely love in Up for Love, and here's a quick look. Tell you. Oh. I so. Love. <laughs> Ça manque 40 cm, c'est ça Pas du tout. Non. Ah non Parce que même... Euh... Ah, Dis-moi la place, euh, je vous invite à vivre un truc extraordinaire. Oh mon dieu oh, Ne vous, vous, vous inquiétez pas, pas j'ai l'habitude Vraiment Oui C'est ma deuxième fois so when I said this film questions whether size matters or not, I wasn't exaggerating. It's no. literally that. It is. But tell us about that. I would say it's line. literally that. It is literally that. It is one joke. He's four foot eight. And she's <laughs> six foot two. Don't tell Comedy anyone. Comedy ensues. Can you tell the difference? Yes. Yes, of course you can. <laughs> you really and that's can. the joke for an hour and a half. <laughs> she's a foot and a half bigger. Hour and 38 minutes, wow. to be precise. Okay. I get it. OK, that's my biggest problem with the film. And it's probably the only problem with the film, because that's the only joke of the film. Uh, yeah. I could think of a few more. <laughs> Go for please. I just, uh, I mean, John Dujardin, he's charming, he's very like, yep. enigmatic. He's six foot. He's six foot. So, Get some on the appropriate height, that please. Is a, no, that <laughs> is a genuine point. It's not like Jean de Jardin is the only actor in France. There are others out there. It's a big country. In fact, there's other actors anywhere. I and wonder if just they saying, went through like a dramatic casting process. But I just, uh, it just I just and got really, the measuring tape out. Just, also, they just they didn't have the budget to. I mean, in an no. industry where they rely so much on decent special effects, they just did not have the budget to back it up. And yeah. I mean, anything Ugh. sentimental, anything heartfelt, look really looks really silly. So it looks so Silly. But like, there's a um, there's a scene in the film which kind of highlights all of this, where they, they they sort of go on a dance date for the first time, right? <laughs> and at the beginning, oh, yeah. you're kind of like, if, so basically to provide context for everybody, they go on a dance date, and so they're <laughs> just in the middle of this dance floor, and they start dancing, and she's obviously a giant, and he's obviously a midget. That's the joke. But then it sort of gets even weirder because he sort of they, they sort of dance and sing for three minutes, and it's sort of like the very some minuscule bit of cuteness that there could have been evaporates because you listen to the whole song. And that's exactly what I was going to say. The entire song it's, you have to it's endure. It's excruciating. It's really... It's just really weird. But also the thing, they make her character incredibly shallow. Um, oh, dear. He's a very, you know, the point is he's charming, he's lovely. He's rich architect. Rich, he's a rich architect. Of course he is. And it's made to think that she's sort of lowering her standards. Both yeah. Figuratively and literally, to like Zing. stoop to his kind of, you know, oh, I'm such a good person for doing this. Yeah, look at me, I'm a hero. And the other problem is that outside of these two, the supporting characters are awful. The worst. They're they so are bad. awful people. You yeah. would not invite them around. But for you said something else. You said it's a very French film. It is, <laughs> and in the sense that it's sort of like I'm not really sure what that means. No, but it's <laughs> it's one of those sense where it has a it tries to capture some of the charm yeah. of those classic French films but then forgets what made those films so charming. It wasn't about the differences in so, physical appearances, but... But with that in mind, how many popcorns would you give it, David? I give it a two. A, it, a two? A mere two? It can stay a two. I would, yes, agree, two. Two it is. Popcorns. Two, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty Generous. accurate. So we give Up For Love two popcorns. <laughs> Up For Love hits the cinema screens tomorrow. Right. Don't watch it. Let's talk competitions. It is finally time to announce the winner of last week's competition. Ooh. Well done. Two. Should we get a drum roll? You are kind of good for that. Philomena Mantio. Well done. Those tickets will be making their way, their way straight over to you soon. Ooh. If you heard that thinking, oh, that could have been me, the answer is yes, it could have. Just enter next time. We'll have another competition, and here it is on its way next. If you've ever wanted to watch Hollywood's biggest stars al fresco, here's your chance. London Live and the Evening Standard have teamed up with Luna Cinemas to give two lucky viewers a night out at London's coolest open-air cinema. You can win a pair of tickets to a screening of your choice. And with venues across the capital, there's bound to be one near you.
to win, just visit londonlive.co.uk forward slash news forward slash Lunar Cinema, where you'll also find full terms and conditions. The winner will be chosen at random, so everyone's got a chance. Entries close at midnight on the 17th of August, so good luck. We will be announcing the winner live on the show in two weeks' time, so keep watching to find out who's won. It could very well be you. Our final film this week is Sweet Bean. Hi, Daddy. Tell us about this film, Beth. Uh, so Sweet Bean, it's set in sort of suburban Japan. Um, it centres around a pancake shop or a doriaki shop uh, where there's uh, the proprietor. He's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder mm. until he meets this wonderful elderly woman uh, who sadly has a, a very severe disease, mm. but um, she teaches him kind of the magic of making proper bean paste in his pancakes. And it's so it sweet. Goes from there. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. It's a family recipe. Oh, uh, it's, it's one of these films where... It can be, I can imagine it being for some too sweet, where it is, it's such a genteel story of I this. I disagree, I think oh, no, it's very it's, subtle, it's very... Do you think? I mean, I'm a, I'm a sucker for kind of suburban Japanese Maybe melodrama. Cold now. It's very... <laughs> <laughs> not cold at all, but <laughs> I just think that they know exactly when to tone it back, so it's not mm. too sugary, it's not too... It's very subtle in how they do it, and you, you just feel yourself very drawn into their situation. It's very mm. deliberate, very... Slow pace, but not boring. No, it's never very boring, no. no. I think you're drawn very much into their lives in a very intimate way. It's lovely. Yeah, it's but the fact that it's pace does it not kind of like if if you are someone with a busy schedule to sit down yeah. and enjoy such a slow ah, pace, this, can it not be a bit? Dragging? I think you know, and I must say, I really did like the film, and I think you know, Beth nailed it. Like. It may be a glacial paste, but that's kind of the way they make this sweet bean paste. And it's sort of, it's supposed to be sort of taking you on this journey of enjoying it, savouring it. You know, the, 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 the way the film is shot, it's incredibly beautiful. It's like an advert for Japan. Like, very stoic, it's never a very bad thing. kind of, it's not too shiny, it's very. No, um, very soft. Yeah. And like, look how well the pancakes made, look how beautiful <laughs> the blossom trees are. You really are. want a pancake after you oh see it. I was just going to say, you really do, it's like food. <laughs> but it, 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 it's, it's a lovely film. and there's no way you can sort of ignore that and I think you just sort of enjoy it I like like eating a pancake what about the different levels within the film because obviously it's not just about the food it's, it's also about, about the relationships and the generations that it covers exactly so you've got mm. these three generations here sort of um, with the proprietor sort of in the middle and this lovely elderly lady with this completely different viewpoint comes yeah, in yeah, teaches yeah, yeah. him the 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 sort of value of yeah, like... the positivity of coming with taking your time with slowing mm. down with getting to know your profession and what you're doing and that there's a real honor in that yeah and I think I think that's what the film greatly earns from is that you do enjoy watching it happen and Naomi Kawazi has been a can favorite for ages yeah. she's been doing yeah. it for like two decades just landing all these can awards but no one over here probably knows who she is apart from a select few and so a film like this and it's only showing in one screening like in London, and I think you should make the effort to see it because, Absolutely. you know, like with Suicide Squad being apparently as bad as it is and Up for Love not being good at all, you know, that <laughs> cough. Like Sweet, Sweet Bean is just one of those that we should heartily recommend. You should go see films like this so then they keep being made and we get more and we enjoy yes. them more. More of that, please. But you mentioned it about being the honour of the Japanese culture and that's very reflective in this film, isn't it? You kind of get a feel of their culture and... But what do you, mm. what do you kind of make of that? Did you... Did it give you a bit more intrigue about what it's all about? or? I think it's a very basic film that says a lot. So I think, yes, no, uh, as we said, yeah. these, these pancakes, they're very much a metaphor for greater things. It's a journey that they make while they're making it together. The proprietor, he's very bristly and closed, mm. but you can tell there's a heart there. And she just manages to coax that out through this very simple task. It's all and good you, performances as well from all sort of three of the generations. Yeah, you almost feel like you're intruding. You're, you're very much yeah. in the space yeah, with them and true. they're sweating it out, making these pancakes. They're up before dawn and you're there 
with them, and yeah. then you get to almost sit with them and eat these pancakes with them, and you feel so immersed in their. That, it's that, the, yeah, it's like you said, it's quite symbolic, isn't it? Because it's all the different layers of the pancake making, yeah. but also their lives. And yeah, and I think a lot of that credit goes to the director. I mean, it's, it takes a very kind of, it, you know, a lot of people think confidence is like watching Edgar Wright. You know, in the sense it has to go bang, bang, bang. But there is a, there is another skill in just letting things happen, not rushing it, not moving the pace forward any further than you want it to go, and just letting the action sort of unfold in front of you, matching where you are, yeah. and, and delivering a great film. Well, like you say, it's very reflective in mm. the kind of final final piece. But with that in mind, that great review in mind, how many yeah. popcorns would you give it? Oh, it's going to be a terrible... No, it's four. <laughs> it's a good four. four. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to agree. Four, four popcorns. Yeah. Four popcorns. Yes. Four pancakes. Well, London <laughs> Film Club gives Sweet Bean four popcorns. Sweet Bean completes this week's lineup and also hits the big screens tomorrow. That is it for today's show, but we shall be back next week with a whole load of Blake, Li Blake Lively and a huge dose of shark teeth in The Shallows. We'll leave you with a trailer of The Shallows, but remember, next Thursday, same time, same place. See you next week. Learning to be self-reliant takes time and hard work. These are the steps. Assume responsibility. Know where you are going. Make your own decisions. Yes, sir. It's hard work to become self-reliant. Any one of us could use a bit more than we have. If you're not self-reliant, You'll never do any more than just get by.